I used to think that just fixing your thinking was all you had to do. You need to open up enough of a space and fix your thinking. But in the last year or so, before I wrote the new book, I discovered that when I looked at the longer term results, it was, uh, I would get what we would call bimodal. So at, at one month, it was about 89.4% of the people had, uh, we got an 89.4% reduction in overeating. But at six months, it was more like 55%. And at the six month mark, there was a group of people that had continued to use the techniques. They were doing really well, almost as well as they'd done before. And there's a group of people who just dropped out. And that's why the overall number went down. So I said, why are people dropping out? Because this seems like such a powerful technique and it's so much more comfortable to eat well than to be overeating all the time and carry the extra weight and feel you know, bloated and gross and like out of control. Like what, why were people dropping out? Yeah, and so many times those people then carry the weight of the guilt as well. So I love that you're looking to help them. Of course, of course. What I found was that the answer inevitably was there came a time when they heard a little voice in their head that said, screw it, just do it. I don't have any good excuses. I've disempowered all my excuses. I fixed all my thinking about fooled, but oh, well, what the hell? Screw it, just do it. And so what is going on with that? And I kind of thought back in retrospect, and I had had some times like that in my own recovery too. And it turns out that everything that's going on there would fall under the rubric of um, organismic distress, um, which required more self-regulation. So one of the biggest things was if people weren't eating regularly, if they weren't you know, flooding their body with nutrition on a regular basis, if they were skipping meals, if they were eating really sugary foods a lot, if they were throwing their dopamine or their blood sugar off by, you know, lots of pasta or white flour or, you know, all the things we all know that we're not supposed to do, or at least not supposed to do too much. Um, if that was in their food plan too much, then they would get thrown off and they just couldn't seem to to stave off that screw it, just do it response. But it was really hard to work with people about their nutrition. Um, Margaret Mead said, it's easier to get somebody to change their religion than to change their diet. Mm -hmm. And we find that to be true. So my, my program is diet agnostic. You can do it on any reasonably nutritious diet that you want to follow. I'm not going to tell you what to eat or what you can't eat. And we can talk more about why it's possible to have things that aren't necessarily nutritious and still control yourself a little down the road if you want to. Um, but, so there, but there were also things like not getting enough sleep, not having enough water, um, feeling too isolated, um, having to make too many decisions over the course of the day. It turns out that willpower is the ability to make good decisions. And it's not really a genetic gift. It's more like we all have a certain amount we wake up with. It's like gas in the tank. And every time you make decisions, not just food decisions, every decision, you are burning a little bit of that gas. And so when people are making decisions all day long, they're handling emails, do I delegate it, do I defer it, do I delete it, do I um, take care of it right now? They're figuring out who's gonna take Jenny to soccer practice and what am I gonna to wear today and what time am I gonna drive home and when are we gonna to go to the movies? When you're making decisions all day long, eventually you reach this state of organistic, or organismic distress where you say, no more. I can't control myself anymore. So we found that if we had people take a couple of 10 minute breaks over the course of the day, even five minute breaks, where you put your phone down, turn off your computer, go hide in the bathroom if you have to, but get away from decisions for five or 10 minutes, twice a day, take a couple of deep breaths. It, this works optimally better if you get outside and get some fresh air, but I know not everybody can do that. Um, and that made a difference. Then some people we're feeling too isolated. They just haven't had enough contact with their tribe. And we found you don't have to be a social butterfly, but you you do need to feel like there are people around you who care, um, who you could reach out to if you wanted to, because we're a pack animal. And in primitive times, if you were too isolated, you were in danger. Like we, we didn't really live, you know, alone in the bush. We were we were not able to necessarily feed ourselves and protect ourselves without without the tribe. And so it leads to a certain amount of organismic distress when you don't have a, a bit of a community around you. Um, not drinking enough water, um, everything that you would associate with self-care. 
um, in order to really recover and stave off that screw it, just do it response, which you can beat with the breathing and the thinking when you get really tough with it. But to really stave it off and give yourself the maximal chance, you need to focus on all of these elements of self-care at the same time. And, and you need to understand that if when you're of sound mind and body, you use your best thinking to come up with a rule you'd like to follow, that that's really a sacred thing. That's a sacred practice. It's um, it's not really just a rule. It's it's a way of being that you're trying to adopt in your life. You know, J Jim Rohn said a life of discipline is better than a life of of regret. Uh, Peter McWilliams said you can have anything you want, but you can't have everything you want. And when you can define a center like that for yourself, there's a uh, there's a calmness and a centeredness and an ability to walk in the world as a mindful person that emerges that you'll become more and more addicted to and more and more upset when you relinquish to the impulses of your reptilian brain or you know the the perils of modern food society so um <laughs>